Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to add kelp water monitoring with a conductivity probe. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. So one, I've been running kelp water on this frag tank since the beginning. I have the ice cap kelp reactor on there. But one of the things I constantly wonder about is when does it start to lose potency? I can kind of watch and see my pH starts to dip, but I figure there must be a better way. Um, so today we're going to add a conductivity probe to monitor it. So we can see what the TDS is of it and we'll use that to know what our concentration is. Now you can also do this with a pH probe, but because it's such a high pH inside of there, I feel like it's a lot harder on the probe and you're going to have to maintain it a lot longer. I kind of feel like a conductivity probe is going to be the better solution. So, picked up the GHL conductivity probe. We also have the little adding card for conductivity. Now in order to install our pH probe, we obviously need to add a little mount or way of putting the probe in there. So we're gonna tap a hole into the lid and probably somewhere right around there. And this is the half inch MPT pipe thread. So we are gonna drill our hole and then do our tap. And as you get close, I do like to stop and then just work on threading it in after that. And I almost drilled this one too far. It looks like I stopped it about the perfect time. And the hard part is done. You know, have our half inch hole in the lid. Let's tell our o-ring and we can thread in our fitting. So just like that our port is installed. Now if we unscrew the top, we do have a little plug in there. So if you didn't have a probe in there, you have a plug. And uh, this o-ring will probably just go on top of the new probe. And we will get it installed and calibrated. Now before we go too much further, we do have to install our expansion card into the back of the GHL P4. And I'm just going to unplug power from the P4 for now. On the bottom of the controller, we do got our four screws. We're just going to pop these out and pop off the lid. Now there is a little connector for the LED, so I'm just going to unplug this. So super easy to install, you just plug in the little pin header. And plug in our LEDs and screws it back together. Now looking at the screen, I do see two conductivities. There's CO.S, which would be salt water, and CO.F, which would mean fresh water. Now given that this is RODI water, I'm just going to leave it on fresh water. And to be honest, it doesn't really matter what the value is, because all we care about is seeing the trends and when it starts to drop. First, we're going to add some kelp. We'll add a cup of kelp to the reactor. And it's going to manually turn on the mixer for now to get things mixing. Install our lid back on. Put the probe through, put the little gasket on. And this guy's gonna poke through the lid. Through our fresh little hole on the top. Now with the probe in there, it's reading 2000 for the conductivity, so super high. I don't know if that's maxing out the probe or what it is yet. So we're just gonna have to monitor this for a little bit and find out. But the biggest thing we care about is knowing when our conductivity, whatever that number is, when we add fresh calc, and when it starts to drop, and we know the calc's starting to be exhausted. And that's gonna be the biggest kind of indicator of telling us when to add fresh calc. Now that expansion card that I got has the conductivity as well as a pH slash ORP pro port. And I actually do have the stock ORP pro whenever I was able to install. So I'm gonna install that one as well since I have the extra expansion port now. And then if I'm running ozone on the frag tank, mainly does help with any potential coral toxins, then it's gonna help eliminate that as well. So kind of a win-win. So let's just monitor this for a day or two and we'll see where the levels are at. All right guys, now this has been running for a week, let's take a look at the data. When we first added it to the tank, we got 9.9 .9 on the scale. So it's a good chunk. Um, and as you can see, after the initial bash, it definitely did drop down. The next day we have about 9.3. You know, the next day we're about eight and a half, eight and a half. You know, 8.5 seems pretty steady. I think it peaks at about 8.8, .8, and I think that was like right when I freshly mixed it up again. So you can see it does progressively start dropping slowly. Now this has only been about a week, but I'm starting to speculate that over, you know, two to three weeks, you should probably see this drop down more. And you know, maybe if it drops below eight, that's kind of where I come to terms that maybe it's losing its potency. Um, if you look down at some of these 7.5, 7.2, this is once it's sat for many hours without being stirred. So you can see when it stirs, it spikes it up. That was around 4 p.m. and the next morning around 8 a.m. So I was playing with a little bit of the stir duration just to see how it would affect this. So I do kind of think this is a really cool way to see how it trends over time. Um, with the conductivity probe too, I do also feel this is going to last a lot longer 
than a pH probe would and it'll require less calibration, so it should be a lot easier. Now, as for the actual values, these don't overly matter. You can, can pick if you want MS, PSU, kilograms per liter. And honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, on the fresh water setting, I was getting like 2000, it was just straight maxed out. But as once we go into just the PSU kind of, or the regular one we have out of the tank, it seemed to be the most intuitive, at least in my mind. So there you guys have it. That is how we added some monitoring to our calc reactor. Now it's only been a week, so it's still a bit early, but I think over the next two or three weeks, I'm gonna slowly see those peaks trending lower and lower and lower. And at that point, I'm gonna have to ration up what point is it kind of considered exhausted or has lost all its potency and add some more. And I'll update you guys on a future update on exactly where I decide that point is. Um, now there's all kinds of different kind of measurements you can use. Um, the, again, on fresh water, didn't work very well from my experience because I was maxing out the meter, which is max 2000 the whole time. Um, when changing it to PSU or the MS ones, that was more of a normal reading. So I'm getting, you know, eight and a half, nine type of thing. So it's a much easier number to go off of. And then once I figure out whatever that exhausted point is, I can set up an alert or something just to kind of flag it to me to top off my calc or change it up. So yeah, pretty cool little addition to add that extra little level to your calc reactor. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, as always, that like button. If you're doing your own type of monitoring, let me know your results and what you're doing below. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys on the next video.